Hey, good morning, YouTube. It's your beekeeper here. I ran that in a channel. The inspector just left, signed off the card. So we're good to cover. And I got excited and started covering and for realized I hadn't taken any video. <laughs> so that covered all the Romex, which made the inspector happy. Signed the card and I came prepared with a bunch of sheet lock. Let's go inside. So in here, I got excited. I started hanging before I started videoing. <laughs> and then I realized I had not taken no video. So I'm doing all the easy runs first, of course. No cutouts. I did have to run a little hole, cut a hole to run the doorbell wires back through. But that's easy enough. I added my nailing plates. And if you're not familiar with nailing plates, they cost about 24 cents a piece from the Home Depot or anywhere else. And they prevent you from running screws when you're doing sheetrock from running screws into your wires in theory now by code these are actually deep enough i don't need to put nailing plates on but for 24 cents a piece whatever just do it do it and shut up do it go ahead so, see they protect you from running a screw i did add a water line for a nice maker in the fridge this has all the copper lines are all run up in the attic since this is a concrete floor, slab floor. So I just got a ice maker installation kit and a bunch of hose and drilled a hole through the top, stubbed it up into the attic and then I'll use one of those uh, Schrader type piercing valves and uh, I'll just pop right into the copper line that runs up in the attic there somewhere. But I don't feel like crawling in the attic today. I did enough of that on Friday, Friday to get all this wire and run. Okay, let's see what we can do. Yeah, this place is starting to look like a kitchen. <clears throat> Hanging some walls. Look at that stuff. It's good stuff. Coming along. So that's about as much rock as I want to hang for the day. I got everything hangulated the way I want it. Come on, balance. There you go. The only thing I left open was here and I'm sure I mentioned it before because I have a tendency to repeat myself but I probably mentioned this before because I have a tendency to repeat myself wait a minute that sounds familiar anyhow I'm sure I mentioned this before because I have a tendency to repeat myself but until I can get the cabinet here on site and I'm sure that that little hangulated part there is going to be what I asked for I'm not going to bother rocking all that in yet and uh, it should be here this afternoon, so if all goes well, I'll be able to figure that out tonight. But instead of standing around, I'm going to start putting some tape on these seams. Oh, look, I do own a pair of gloves that don't have holes in them. And I'll show you my other hand. Ooh, these are great drywalling gloves. I found these at the Home Depot. Can you tell by the color? They're just cotton gloves that have this little rubberized uh, honeycomb dealy beal on it. And they work awesome. They get great grip on this paper because this paper just kills my skin. The, the uh, rock and everything, the sheet rock and everything just dries out my skin. And by the end of the day, I'm slipping and I can't even, because I got no moisture left. But these guys are awesome. See? Gloves. <laughs> waiting. Waiting for the truck to get here. Got the first coat of fire tape on. I'll probably put a second coat on the seams even though they're hidden. I like a nice even surface for the tile, which really is kind of overkill. Because I can manipulate tile with the grout thickness of the or mortar, with the thickness of the mortar. But I'm just kind of like that. It's my time. I do whatever the hell I want. Normally you have to wait and get signed off for your screw count. And uh, I talked to the inspector this morning and he went ahead and signed me off on that and said I was okay to cover. I didn't have to call him back out, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to vacuum and mop and wait patiently for the cabinets to arrive. Drywall roll lifter. Awesome. 48 inch drywall square. Awesome. Those are two must have items. Here's your tip for the day. You want to look like a cool drywall guy, pick one of these up. They're about 12 or 15 bucks at Home Depot. They get under the edge of the drywall. You can step on this edge here and it lifts them into place. Those are awesome. And then these T-squares are fantastic for cutting 
Oh, I just ran it through my wet mug, damn it. Ah, that's a shame. Oh well, I'll fix that next time. Uh, anyway, the T-square is great for cutting straight lines and drywall. And uh, that's one of those tools that once you get one, you wonder how you live without it. Because that thing works fantastic for doing uh, plywood, cutting plywood, ripping plywood, or like paneling, or any type of sheet goods. So roll lift, drywall lift, and a T-square. There's your tip for the day, man. Get those in your inventory. These run about seven bucks at Home Depot. And uh, like I said, that's like 12 or 15 bucks, something like that. Pretty cool. So I got a house full of cabinets. Thomasville Cabinetry is who did it. Made in the good old USA. Check this out. Master Brand Cabinets Inc. is where they were shipped from Grants Pass, Oregon. Built from scratch up in Grants Pass, Oregon. That's pretty cool. Now let's take a look. I went for the upgrade of the plywood cabinets, not the particle board. I don't really like particle board. So they're all made with plywood. That's the color. It's called Macaroon by Thomasville. And check this crap out. Let me step back here, see if I can get you all into focus. Oh, Lord. We got a house full of... <laughs> yeah, there are 16 cabinets, plus uh, probably half a dozen boxes of stuff like this. This is crown molding. We got a long eight foot piece here, which is the uh, side panel for the refrigerator. We've got crown molding and toe kicks in here, and we've got side panels here. And we got, uh, what do we have here? Oh, we have lunch. We have lunch here. So not being able to leave well enough alone, I tore this little corner unit out here. I have to rebuild it. The uh, new cabinet's a bit deeper, so I have to make this little hangulated corner here a little smaller. Ain't no thing. And then I nipped off the uh, plumbing here and just soldered some caps on there. And I don't know, well, this is going to change. This waste pipe here, it's an inch and a half. Uh, it's going to get a little shorter. And then the 20 minute mud had dried enough to where I could put a second coat on. So just uh, about 20 minutes ago, I finished this up. I threw a second coat of mud on everything. Oh, a couple quick changes too. A sharp eye there, redneck Brian. Uh, on the back side of this wall, there were two wires that were stubbed out that were wire nutted in. Before the inspector came this morning, who he came and left and everything is okay. Uh, before he came, I put that in a box. I got an old work plastic box. Um, I removed light fixture from the bathroom side, cut a hole, and I put all those connections. I don't know, that was done previously, but I couldn't leave that in there. That one got changed out, and oh yeah, I had to uh, talk back and forth with a fellow YouTuber that was asking me about the powering I was using, the power I was using for this, and if they allowed me to be able to use an appliance power for lighting. And I changed it before the inspector got here. Before I put this sheetrock on, I dropped another power lead using utilizing the 15 amp circuit that this light is on uh, to run this independent of the appliance circuit, but they would have allowed it anyway. Um, but it's just a good idea, uh, just to clarify that, it's a good idea to keep your lighting circuit separate from your, uh, especially these would be considered a high consumption uh, appliance circuit. So I have, still, I have only those two plugs are going to be on the under cabinet lights and now the under cabinet lights are going to be off this, which are the old knob and tube wiring, but they're considered energy efficient or they will be energy efficient lighting, low consumption stuff, so it's not that heavy. So there you go, that's how we're wrapping out Monday. Oh, and another thing too. God, I'm tired. I'm just babbling on and on. I always, well, always is a pretty broad statement, but 99 out of 100 times, I run tape and mud on the top corner where the wall meets the ceiling. It's not a requirement, as probably 85% of those seams you won't be able to see. Once you get cabinets up there, cabinets are going to come within about three and a half inches or so of the ceiling. I've got a three inch filler piece and then we're going crown molding. Um, but just in the interest of keeping air from moving from the attic into here, keeping air, keeping dust, keeping the potential for bugs uh, to get from the attic into the house, I like that. It doesn't take but about 20 minutes for me to come around here with tape and mud and tape that corner in and I've now just sealed it off. I pulled down enough crown molding and seen dirt back behind there so I know stuff migrates through from the attic. The attic. Tomorrow, Tuesday. 
tomorrow Tuesday if I can pull myself out of bed. We've got tech week this week, and so I got to go work at the school till 12 or 1 this morning. Um, and then I'll be back at it here at 8, 8.30 tomorrow. Tomorrow we will build this little deal here and finish the sheetrock here. Put another coat of rock all the way around. I'm putting some can lights in. Uh, sh don't tell the inspector he's already gone. But we're not keeping this single overhead light. I'm going to put, uh, I haven't figured it out yet, but probably five recess lights. And I'll be utilizing that power. Come on, balance out. Using that power source. So, there you go. We'll see you Tuesday. We'll see how this goes. Thanks for watching.